where these people have no proper training whatsoever. They've got no horticultural experience. <laughs> they don't know anything about mowing heights. They don't know anything about fertilising, pruning, or appropriate pest controls. They don't know any of these things. And, of course, they then offer poor advice. Where are we starting? In, in, in no particular order, mm. for no particular reason, but I'm going to start off with things like Jim's mowing services. Right. All right. Okay. Um, and and the other franchises, not just gyms. Yeah, I mean, Jim. there, there are other there are other you know mowing franchises. Mm. Um, and one of the, the things that bugs me about this is that you can just go and buy a, a franchise, pay Jim his, his exorbitant prices for a, a, a mowing round, where you where these people have no proper training whatsoever. They've got no horticultural experience. They don't know anything about mowing heights. Very good training. They don't know anything about fertilising. They three pruning. days of yeah. horticulture well, training. Three days pest of controls. business training. They don't know any of these things. And pest course, control, fully they trained. Offer poor advice mm. to the clients. Actually, you know, far so better than most independents. Most independents don't this, any this sort is a, of training. It's a real shame. It, it, it's it's filling. It fills a, a, a market because people are so time poor now. Mm -hmm. And they get, oh, like, oh, I haven't got time to cut the bloody grass. We'll, we'll get Jim's mowing in or get someone in who, who's, you know, never done this sort of work before in their life except their own gardens. And they think, oh, I'll do that because mowing's easy. Just go oh, down, mowing's down. easy, yeah. Oh, that's a real smart thing. They've been properly trained. They, think, oh, they get oh, ongoing easy. training. Just they get regular easy. meetings. Yeah. You know, and I, and I always bang on about mowing. It's, it's, a, it's a big part of... of how a, how a place looks, and we're in the middle of winter now. And if you went out to, out to my backyard, my my grass is dark green, oh, yeah. and even though it's kikuyu, it's a mongrel grass, but it's a dark green, and that's because I know how to look after it. Okay, um, you know my experience over the years. Um, you know I've worked in turf research. I was curator at you know Turak Ladies College for oh, seven odd years, oh, and then yeah. I you know so I've got lots and lots of experience. Yeah, of course. So every independent has got a horticulture degree. This is news to me. Um, but, but these people that, that mow the grass, I mean, in the middle of winter, for instance, rather than cutting the grass every two weeks, they might be saying, oh, gee whiz, I can't go out every two weeks because I'm cutting nothing. So in order to get their money, they go out to that grass that's basically dormant and they lower the mowing height. And by lowering the mowing height... No, actually, no. They, they, they increase the, the they reduce the frequency. Cuts. Three, four because weeks go on holidays to Queensland. The, the, the That's what they do. The top, Everybody does the it. The less roots, dis, the less root depth you have below to sustain. Mm. What's Plant on the would top. not put up so with having lawns mowed shortly during the year. What kind of business are you in? Day, Mm. Burns the roots, right. so the grass is dead. Right. Whereas if, if if they were if they were half smart about the way that they controlled mowing grass, for instance, they would be feeding it on a regular basis. They would be encouraging that growth to come up. That's funny because I just spoke to the class about fertilising and the importance of fertilising at the start of every season. We actually train and encourage our franchises to cut the proper height, not too short. It's more clients that actually push it but below, and they would have something to cut. Mm -hmm. That's right. On a fortnightly basis. And they would have a, a, a the client would have a beautiful green, lush lawn. Mm -hmm. But Jim's mowing, oh, poor Jim. Poor Jim. Jim or whoever, whatever franchise would not have the money that they need to keep the business going. So you're saying they're going on a weekly basis, cutting people's lawns? Yeah. Or is, actually, they're better off than most independents because they're generally busy all year round. It's the opposite. And they just try to justify their time. We knock back hundreds of thousands of jobs all year round. Our guys are busy. so many times during winter before you get down to bare dirt. And then you've got all sorts of, you know, inherent problems. This guy's just ignorant. He has no idea how people run business. We do train them very thoroughly. You wouldn't find one percent of independent contractors in Australia get trained as much as our guys do. To understand do. these things, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, there's with the, the internet today, there's there's lo lots and lots of access to those That's things. Right. You know, there's Instagrams, there's lots of posts on those yeah. sorts of things yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. how to do. We things. also follow up on complaints and with too. So if some if person doesn't know how to do something, something then, then we come back and say, OK, now go and do it, or retrain in the field, or have extra training about customer service. Um, firstly, so what stops me from going to buy a trailer and a bunch of equipment and starting as an independent untrained? So why pick on a franchise? 
Here at gyms, they spend a week in uh, training. They're then offered courses, horticultural courses, certificate two, certificate threes. They have plenty of advice and support from franchisees, well-trained franchisees, well, franchisors, well-trained franchisees that have certificates of qualification. Oh, I've got a certificate three, all sorts of other qualifications. What I like, Keith, I'm not sure about your qualification, grass. Um, no, I think you're at college, the girls' college, for seven years. That's the gardener there. Yeah, so okay, but grass, <laughs> it's actually called turf. Again, terminology, they mow the grass so, sh or the turf, sorry, so short that it's on the dirt. It's not dirt, it's soil. So I don't know. I don't know about your qualifications because your terminology is not fantastic. And I don't understand why your broad-based assumption is that every gym's person or every buy person buying a franchise has no idea what they're doing. They do. And they, as again, I say, they have fantastic resources here at gyms, whether it's, again, I'll go through, the training for seven days, the resource of a franchisor, the resource of qualified franchisees willing to help. Yes, you're right, the internet's a wonderful tool to use. Also, all your suppliers. We teach them to use professional suppliers, so proper suppliers for horticultural products, whether that be fertilising, pesticides, herbicides, um, nurseries, whatever, and then they are full of knowledge to be able to use as well to build your knowledge. No one went out knowing exactly what to do from day one in any trade, okay? But I just don't like your broad-based assumption that every gyms person, every person buying a franchise has no idea what they're doing. Okay, so you worked at Turek College. Great, <laughs> fantastic. What'd you do? Mow straight lines with a, mow with a mower and cut a few plants? And he talks about education and training, and yet here we are in a fantastic training facility where for the last four hours I've been talking about the importance of fertilising, the importance of mowing heights, the importance of looking after the client's lawn when it's dormant. So rather than speak on a subject where you think you're educated about and, and have an opinion, how about researching what you're about to talk about before jumping on your horse and bad mouthing something that you know completely nothing about. He talks about having all this experience and education yet he's clearly uneducated about the way we do things here. Look, I think there's probably a small element, and I'm talking less than a percent, mm. of what he said might have been correct, in that people who may not have had a vast experience in mowing or gardening buy a franchise. But that experience becomes manifestly increased when they come out here, they do the course, and then they go and learn on the job. They're not going out knowing nothing. They're going out with some starting base. And, you know, it just doesn't stop there. I went on and did Cert 2 and Cert 3 in horticulture. And I did it only because it was offered to me through the gyms network. So the fact that he thinks, oh, yeah, we're all just going to go and spend money and buy a mower and our job's done. Perhaps he should look at the independence versus... How many independents are out there versus how many gyms out there and compare a few lawns and gardens. He's welcome to come out and have a look at some of my clients' lawns because I can tell you, his might be looking pretty good in winter and dark green, probably because he spray painted it. But come and have a look at some of my <laughs> clients' lawns. I bet you they're looking far better than his. The fact of the matter is our people... Oh, look, I have enormous respect for independents. I really do. I think anybody who gets their business off the ground without the help of a franchise, and the great majority fail. Something like 90% fail in their first year. And it's true. Most of them don't have any training. They pick it up in the field as they go. Maybe they'll look at things like YouTube videos. But if you looked at the industry as a whole, our guys would be in the top 10% because they have, they have to do it up front. We make them do it. Three days business training, three days hoarded credit training. We make them go to ongoing meetings. The franchisor needs to ring them at least a monthly. We follow up all complaints about anything going wrong. So any problem with the job, we will follow it up. We will go, we will retrain train the person in the field. If they get too many trains, we'll make complaints, we'll make them go out again. So if people in the industry, ours are actually by far the best. Look, we have, an issue, we have a system called um, BIZA, where we actually sell jobs to independents. So this is the people out there already in the field needing work. We sell our surplus jobs because we've got hundreds of thousands of unserviced leads. You know what the most biggest characteristic of independence are? The service is nothing like as good as our guys. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have to cut, 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 cut. 
Most of the people we actually give work to, we end up, we don't give work to because their service is not good enough. They're not as good as our own franchisees. I've, I've, there's a guy on this course at the moment who has been in the industry for 10 years, mm. and he has chosen to get out of working for a company and go it on his own. So he's completely and utterly wrong that people have no knowledge when they come and buy a franchise of, or in the mowing. On, on not only that, but the franchisors themselves yes. are mostly experienced too. They're really long time in the field. I myself was a lawman contractor for 15 years. Now, I don't have a hort degree, but I certainly know a lot about looking after gardens. And I will give assistance and help and advice to people. There's all sorts of people in Jim's group who can actually help and advise and help them out. So what this guy says is very sensible in a sense, but that yes, people who in this field should be trained and qualified. What he doesn't recognise is that in fact Jim's mowing or Jim's pest control is actually a solution because we're better at than the vast majority of independents. And that's why they succeed. You know, in a given year, um, in, a, in the first year of business, between 90 and 95% of independent businesses fail, often because they just don't know what they're doing, they're not... They, they're not qualified, they're not trained, they're not supported. By comparison, 12% of our people we lose in the first year. And that's not for lack of knowledge or training, it's because some people just aren't suited in business or they have a health problem or they, or they get offered a great job somewhere else. Spend a day on the road with a couple of, mm. of Jim's franchisees mowing mm. and go and have a look at some of the high-end gardens that they maintain and, and, the law, and speak to some of the clients about what we've been able to do not me particularly, but, you know, how their gardens have increased. Sure, people are time poor, but they don't choose just gyms because they're time poor. They choose them because they know it's a good brand, a good, um, a good network, and they trust the people that are doing their properties. So, you know... And it's not just lawns, so let's just correct no, them. So well, I know because no. you do a lot of projects and you put them online, so maybe you want to talk about some of your stuff. Yeah, look, okay, so, sure, we mow lawns, we do turf, we do irrigation. There are guys out there who are qualified landscapers doing total makeovers. Um, myself, I do a lot of soft landscaping, planting, mulching, redesigning people's gardens. Now, I'm not, I don't have a degree in landscape architecture. It doesn't mean I don't know what I'm doing. It doesn't mean I don't know what particularly is going to grow well or look well in a client's garden. Versus an independent who might be in and out one day a fortnight or one day a month, you know, we spend a bit of time with our clients, we get to know them. So when you get to know your client, you get to know the client's garden. We've had green greenskeepers from really good yeah. golf courses come in from 10 to 12 from years. From Allen and Farm. Yeah, We had got... one from, come from Allen and Farm, the Packers for, uh, private, private farm with their golf course came through recently. Correct. I've interviewed multiple people who've done that. I've got, got you know, a lot of greenskeepers who've come through here, award-winning gardens, but they come to Jim's Mowing because it's a great business and brand and they can do it. It's not just mowing lawns. No. There's gardening, there's landscaping, there's gutters, there's everything else. If you're just mowing lawns and doing the old whip and mow, you're not going to really have a good business, no. do you? So you do a lot more than that. And the reason why we're we not gardeners, I call it horticulturalists. Horticulturalists, there you go. But we're not we're not doing this to um, have a go because like I've actually looked at his Instagram. He's got some nice tips and stuff like that. He's a passionate gardener, and that's the thing. But the misconception about people about what you guys do is quite often frustrating. And for someone to go in for four minutes and say all these wrong things, we're in a lecture theatre, the 120 seats, yep. where we have one of the best training courses in the country for home services in general and for Jim's Mowing. It's been going for nearly 30 years now with yep. the training. And we've got so many franchisees who are experts at what they do with all the horticulture certificates that do more than just mowing, it's gardening and stuff. They've got fantastic advice. Check out our YouTube channel and our podcast as well. That a bloke can come from an office where he's overstressed, doesn't see his kids or whatever, and has a passion for gardening, can turn that passion into a profit, yeah. can see his wife and be a better dad and be a better husband to his family. We hear that all the time. And that's thousands of Australians who have done that over the but years. But that's not only time, right? anyone that's passionate about any... They don't need to necessarily have experience... They are then braver human beings to follow their passion. Yes. Whether they start with not a lot of experience, professionally, let's say, but they're very passionate and they're passionate to learn. So you can't assume that everyone going out is just not wanting to learn or hasn't learned, upskilled himself so much. Yes, I started with not a lot of skills. I employed someone that had 30 years in skills. And then I upskilled within a few months and got my certificates, read 
was a wealth of knowledge, asked people questions, got advice, found out everything I needed to know to upskill myself to something that I was really passionate about when I started. Yeah, and let's, So let's, someone telling me that I was an idiot and didn't know what I was doing, you know? It's, it's, it's arrogance and it's elitism. And try to make gardening attention. into an elite profession where it's only for an exclusive few with all this wisdom of knowledge and that's it. And you should yeah. only, only should be us. We know everything and no one else knows anything. Like, that attitude is completely wrong. So we're not having a go at Keith. No, we're not. I'm actually glad he said it. I, we can make I offer it, Keith but... to come out yeah. and work with me for a day and have a look. And go out, we'll go out with a brand new person. I come think... to training, Keith. I... I'll shout your lunch here. <laughs> Jim will shout your lunch and we'll show you around and show you the efforts we put in. Because what we don't want is we don't want people doing the wrong thing and giving bad service. It tarnishes our brand. We want, and we want people to succeed. And making people succeed is skilling them up. Not everyone wants to go out and garden and prune fruit trees or roses or hedges or whatever. There are people who just want to go and mow lawns and make the grass, the turf grow properly. Okay, so that's it. You know, so I'm happy. Come out and have a look at our training. And then we'll sit down, Keith, you and I, and we'll have a chat in the podcast and talk about our training. And we may be working together, our lives will be happier. But also, look, um, uh, Joel did make this point that if the people are happy and they've come from stress situations and they're spending more time with their family, so what are they doing wrong? Nothing. Following a passion, trying, and their passion might be to find more time with their family. And they might be upskilling themselves. They mightn't have a lot of training or a lot of experience but at gyms we're going to help them all the way look and i'm sure he's got some um great knowledge and great experience that he could share he does he has a great instagram i've, I've got to give him he's got a great instagram where they share their gardening passion but i think the, the arrogance almost in a way that no one else has that same passion within jim's mind is just completely wrong yeah and look give others the opportunity to, to get to his you know time in the business before he starts knocking off mm. people that he doesn't even know mm. Look, I appreciate everything he says, actually, about the need for people to be professional. He's just totally ignorant about the way our system works. And he has an extraordinary idea that all the independents out there have all done hort degrees and so forth. Very few of them have that kind of qualification. But we think it's I do respect independence. I really do. Mm. I take my hat off to anybody who can make a go of it in this business without the kind of help we provide. But I tell you what, our guys are good. Overwhelming majority. There's a few that aren't quite so good and we really take steps. And sometimes, sometimes we'll actually terminate somebody who really won't give good service to clients. But the great majority of Jewish people are very good at what they do.